definitely been about six years that this particular camp's been here. One time somebody pulled a gun, which was recent, and they went to jail. The second, the time before, which was back in 2018, that, that was at that camp and somebody pulled a wrench on me and came after me. They paint these pictures when the politicians talk, like Great Depression pictures of this hardworking family that are really down on their luck, which was the case then. This isn't the case. These are 25-year-old, 30-year-old people taking advantage of a system that's definitely broken. Yeah, let's bring in criminal defense attorney and federal litigator Vic Bajaj. Vic, I mean, you know, Marianne's right. You talk about this, and, and it's not just in Venice, and it's not just in Santa Monica. You look outside this studio, and they are around this building. And the police keep saying, yeah, we're going to come, and we're going to get these people taken away. But they never do. And if they take them away, they only stay away for a couple of days, and everybody feels like the law is just not on their side. Your thoughts? Well, well that's right. But you have to turn <laughs> back the scrolls of time, and you have to look at when city councils and board of supervisors throughout the state of California actually made it criminal. There were illegal lodging statutes and things of that nature, but that became so unpopular that people who are looking to vote themselves into office mm -hmm. said, hey, we can't do that. It's going to cost us our jobs. So now we're really in a position where there is no solution. Protect the public, go soft on homeless individuals who may or may not be criminals. Mm -hmm. They may have issues that have brought them to the homeless sure. area. Nobody's making judgment about that. However, what do you do to protect the people who have their children walking on the street, paying taxes? The politicians are looking to keep themselves in office, and you can't be tough on homelessness if you're going to do that. Yeah, in Wisconsin, a trans student, 18-year-old, a biological male, showered with four females. Wisconsin Institute of Law and Liberty wrote the following here. Under federal law, the incident should have been reported to the Title IX coordinator, who should have then contacted the girls, offered supportive measures, and provided them an opportunity to file a complaint. No one from the district contacted any of the girls' parents at that time, and no one investigated. To be clear, that means that the district's initial response to this incident, this incident violated Title IX. The school says, no, 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 we, we worked this all out, but, but this sure looks like a violation of Title IX. It absolutely is beyond any shadow of a doubt. Here's the issue. There's no flow chart. We don't know if you have a violation of a biological woman's rights. Well, then you go to step two. Then you go to step 2B. No one knows how to actually navigate Title IX vis-a-vis -vis transgender issues. That's mm -hmm. the reality. Title IX, let's not forget, decades ago was put into place specifically to protect women's involvement and to prevent discrimination and harassment from sports, athletics, as we see it normally mm -hmm. translated, although it affects everything. Well, how does a biological male who identifies as a female fit within that paradigm? Yeah. And no one knows. We can have a discussion for a couple hours about this, Trace, and we probably still couldn't come up with a solution. So how can we expect the school boards to do the same? So how do you approach that solution? I mean, is it something that's got to be litigated? Are we talking about something that, that may go to the Supreme Court? Because it's, it's really... I mean, it's uncharted territory. It is, absolutely. You hit the nail on the head. And what really needs to happen is these school boards need education. Mm -hmm. This example in Wisconsin is a prime example of not knowing what to do. Once there's a complaint made, there's yeah. an order of operations. It has to be reported as per Title IX, and yeah. there has to be an investigation to protect the complaining party through less restrictive means. I got to go, but Alec Baldwin, is he off the hook? Is he, is he not? Is this thing going to come back and haunt him? What's the status here? Ten seconds. When a prosecutor says they're dismissing a case without prejudice, technically they can bring it back. Mm -hmm. What it's really saying is softly, we don't have a case. I think he can rest easy. Yeah. Vic Bajaj, great to have you. Thank you. My pleasure.